Okay, last two constructors. If you don't remember that, go back and watch it. And yes, in this tutorial, uh, I guess I can teach you about. Sure, why not? I'll I'll try teaching you array lists. So first, we're gonna completely disregard this class for now. We don't need it anymore, or at least we'll we'll need it later, but not right now. So we're just gonna get rid of all of this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna an array list is if you don't know this, it's basically one integer with tons of numbers in it. So like we could do int one alright, int int one int two int three four and in case I haven't told you before, which I may not have, when you type a type of variable, then you type lots of different things after it, lots of different names after it's separated by commas, it turns them all into whatever this is. So these are all ints now. Now we could do that, and we could have like, we could be setting them to stuff. So int one equals 10 and 2 equals 3 and 3 equals 27 and 4 equals 50 and 5 equals 102 so yeah you could do that and then you could print them all out but what you can do instead is you can make an array list so to do that, what you do is let's just say we want to only use int one and we still want to have five numbers in it. You put square brackets here, okay? And then after that, you put equals new int or whatever the type of object is, and then you put another square brackets, and then inside of this bracket, you put how many different variables you want in the list. So in this case we want five. And then you've done it. So now what you can do is int one and the array so you call the different objects in the array list is you put square brackets and then the number of the the number in the array of what you're trying to get. So like and arrays start on zero. So, like in programming, you start on zero and then you go up. So, this is actually zero through four. So, this, we're going to set this equal to 10. Int one, one equals 20. Int, int one, two equals tw 35. Int, Three, not int one three equals forty. Int four, int one four equals one hundred. And then you'll see here if we try to do int five or int one five, it should give us an error. Okay, no, it doesn't. But if you run this, you'll see that we get an error. We'll get array index out of bounds this 5 which is right here so this is probably going to be a rather long episode because I'm going to try to cover a couple things just to show how this all works but basically it's 0 through 4 so 1 2 3 4 5 different variables all stored under one name with different numbers that you can use to call them. So we said five variables here and then here's our five and this one doesn't work. So just so you can see this is working we're going to print out and then I'm lazy so I'm just going to copy this paste it a couple times and then do one, two, three 
and 4. So then if you run this, you can get 10, 20, 35, 40, and 100, which is everything we've entered right here. So you can see that it works right there. But another thing, cool thing, another reason why you would want to use arrays in an array list is that they have special variables to them. So like, one thing you can do is you can create a for loop. So you can do for int i equals zero. i is less than, if you don't remember how a for loop works, you should go back and watch that tutorial. But basically you uh, set a variable and then you check a condition, then you do something. So while i is less than int one, and then most ints don't have this, but since it's an array list, it has this variable called length with it. So now we can use this length variable, and that's how long it is, obviously. And then we're going to do i++. So now what we can do is we can do a fancier print statement that will actually show you how it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to print out i plus a, don't really worry about this, but this is a tab, so a slash and a tab, and t is a tab, and we're going to put colon, another slash, or another tab, and then we're going to add, we're going to add int 1 i to it. So, before I run this, I'm going to try to explain what it's going to do. So, it's going to loop through all it's going to loop through five numbers with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because that's how long the array, array is. It's five long. So what it's going to do is it's going to print out 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, whatever it is, and then it's going to print out a tab, a colon, another tab, and then it's going to print out int 1, our array list, and then this i in here is this i. So going to print out whichever number it's on. So if you run this, it makes a bit more sense. You can see 0, 10, 1, 20, 2, 35, 3, 40, 4, 100. So if you check that again up here, it's the exact same, which more or less proves that it works. And just so that you can see, yeah, you can get bigger numbers. You can do 7 here. And then if you run this, the rest are just going to be zeros. 5 and 6 are just going to be zeros because we didn't set them to anything. But you can see it added to it, and then let's actually set them to something. Equals. Okay. So then if you run that, you'll see that they changed. So that's. That's all good. You can see you can see you see how this for loop works, and then you can see how you can set the different vari variables in an array right here. But what if there was a simpler way to do this? Don't worry, there is. You don't have to type out all of this. Instead, what you can do is I'm gonna comment all this out. So if you don't remember comments, it's basically it's ignored by the compiler. So when you run it whatever's in a comment doesn't matter. So I just commented all that out. I selected it all and then pressed out control slash. So what instead you can do is you can put an open bracket here, then you just start typing numbers, and you have to separate each one by a comma. And then you put an end bracket, and your semicolon. So this is the same thing as all of this. And basically, what it's doing is it's um, each number that you entered in here is added on to the next index inside of the array. So this is on 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So if you run this, we're going to get the same exact results as this, as you can see right here. And the reason this works is Java allows you to do this. Like you can, you don't have to specifically define each element in the array. You can just have one element, a comma, the next element, another comma, and then third third element, and so on. 
as long as you want to go. So this this doesn't restrict. You don't have to say new int and then however many you want. You can just type however many you want in here. And it will change the length of the array to match what you've typed. So you can see now we're up to 11 indexes. And it's not 10, remember, because we start at 0. So it's actually 11. Because we have 11 numbers here. So, yeah, if you, that's more or less how that works. And then there's one more final thing about arrays. So if I kind of rushed through this because, well, uh, I'm trying to just get the point across. So if you don't understand it, understand it, then leave a comment on that. But there's one more thing that I want to show you, and if this might confuse you. It, it confused me for a little while when I was first learning it, but it, it's going to be helpful in the future. So we can just leave, we can just get rid of this now because we don't need it anymore. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this for loop. And then instead, we're going to type, this is called an enhanced for loop, or at least that's what I was taught it's called. So you do for and then we're going to do int x, you put a colon, and then int 1. So, I'm going to just tell you what this does. Actually, I'm going to create another int out here, counter, int counter, so you can just see what's going on. And we're going to set it equal to 0. So, basically what this is doing is it's going to loop through the entire array this entire array, and then while it's doing that, each loop x is going to become the next value of int 1. So what we're going to do, or what I'm going to attempt to make us do, is get the exact same results as this, but with this loop instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to print out counter plus then our tab colon tab plus x. And then we're going to add one counter. And that way counter moves up with the list. So you can see it's the same results as before. We just have a different kind of loop. And this loop is really helpful when you don't want to write a big for loop for getting the length of an array. And uh, I'm going to repeat what it does. It takes whatever, it takes the array, so this array and it loops through every single object you have in it, every single instance you have in it. So it loops through all of these, and every loop, this int x, is set to the next one of these. So first it's 10, then it's 20, then it's 35. 10, 20, 35. And the counter thing, it's first at 0, so of course 0. And then each time we loop, we add 1 to it, so it moves up with the array index. So, I know I may have confused you about that, because array lists aren't necessarily the most nice things. They can tend to be confusing at times. So, if you're confused about that at all, please leave me a comment, and I'll try to explain it much better, or as better as I can. But I think, I think that's going to be it for now with the array lists. So, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like it. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. If you have suggestions for what I should cover next, leave a comment on that. And as I said before, if I confused you at all, if, I, if you need me to go over anything again, leave a comment on that too.